We're originally from Iowa okay. and just moved down there about a year and a half ago. Love it. Yeah, we're going to the West Coast in Chicago. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Nobody came to. You know, distortion 17. Distortion 17. It wasn't no lucky shot. You know, I was interviewed on the overpass just this last week by a local uh, TV, not TV, sorry, the newspaper, Lima News in Lima, Ohio. And uh, the guy had to look to my sign that was on the fence to even say the words extortion 17. This is a reporter. Okay, this is a reporter for wherever, any community out there in America. For them not to know of it, and they have to read from a sign, that is disgusting to me. That's what this is all about. All about the biggest loss in the Iraq-Afghan war, 30 brave Americans. And nobody knows. Nobody knows. We got you know? I was on the, I was on the train down here in Washington, extortion 17. People are like, what? Who's got extortion? To take by demand, that's what extortion means. To rob American people. And to rob me, my son. Everybody in America. Three, two, 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 exactly five, four, three, two, one, five, four, three, two, one. Welcome to the Reclaim America Now mass demonstration. People throughout the country are following what we're doing, being televised on radio. The country and the nation is watching. My name is Larry Clayman. I'm the chairman and general counsel of Freedom Watch, and we welcome you all here. We're now going to play the national anthem sung by Pat Boone, who's a member of our coalition, and I'm going to explain exactly what that coalition is in just a few moments. you to a good friend and a patriot, Bishop Dan Johnson, who's going to give the invocation. This is a great day. It's a great day because there's men and women here, people that are family of the United States of America. We're citizens, we're people, but we are connected. Today is not just a demonstration, it's not just a gathering are an assembly of a mass of people. Today is a spiritual day. And I know with all of my heart that everything that's happened in the United States of America from the very beginning happened because of men and women that loved God, believed in God. From the settlements of this land before there was a United States of America over 400 years ago in Jamestown when those first settlers came here, no matter what history tries to make it now, when people try to rewrite it, those that came to settle this country came here because of God. And they came here to preach Jesus Christ, and that's the fact. I am uh, Bishop Dan Johnson, pastor, founder of Heart of Fire Church, Heart of Fire Ministries. I've got a lot of friends here today. I've got Americans here today. And also, just back in September, I rode here on my motorcycle. I'm a part of the two million bikers, and Linda B's over here. The Tea Party's here. They're doing a great thing. And I will tell you right now, God is behind Larry Clayman, and I don't give a rip what anybody says. He's got God in him, and he's here today doing what he's doing, and he's got us here today doing what we're doing because there is a God in America. 
I was the first responder to 9-11. I watched the second plane hit in New York City. I was the minister and pastor that did last rites and blessings for all of those that came out of the towers. I live 9-11 every day of my life. I, like so many, am a victim of what happened and what's happened afterwards, not just the thousands that were lost that day, but now the hundred plus a year that die because of all the fallout from the towers at the World Trade Center. We're just blocks away from the Pentagon that was hit. Pennsylvania where a plane went down. This is the absolute facts of what we're living with today. We're in a country right now that's not loved by a whole world. We're in a country today that's hated by a lot of nations. But I will tell you what I do know and what you know and what all those countries know that when there's ever been a need, our country has been there because we do believe in God. America is great, and it needs to be restored to its greatness. So every day, every day, when I think back, every night when I wake up in cold sweats and dreams about men and women, citizens from all races, citizens from all nations, that died that day because of the hatred against this country. I know that every one of us lived that day continually, some more than others. But what needs to happen and what should not and cannot be forgotten is what happened following the towers being hit, following the Pentagon being hit, following the plane crash in Pennsylvania and the bombings that went on of innocent lives that were taken. What we cannot forget is the day that it happened, everyone's head bowed and prayed to God. And that's what we have to do again. I would like everyone, if you will, today, if you would like to bow your head. Heavenly Father, we come before you. We ask forgiveness. We seek your direction and guidance. We know your word says, woe to those who call evil good. But that's exactly what we've done. We've lost our spiritual equilibrium. We've inverted our values. We've ridiculed the absolute truth of your word and called it moral pluralism. We have worshiped other gods and called it multiculturalism. We have endorsed perversion and called it an alternative lifestyle. We have exploited the poor and called it the lottery. We have neglected the needy and we called it self-provision. We have rewarded laziness and we've called it welfare. We have killed the our unborn and we've called it choice. We have neglected to discipline our children and we've called it building self-esteem. We have abused the power and called it political savvy. We have coveted our neighbor's possessions and we've called it ambition. We have polluted the air with profanity and pornography and we've called it freedom of expression. We have ridiculed the time-honored values of our forefathers and called it enlightenment. Search us, O oh God, and know our hearts today. Try us and see if there be some wicked way in us that needs to be cleansed and forgive us from our sin and set us free. Lord, we ask you to cleanse us, to forgive us, to guide us and bless us. And the men and women who have been sent and ordained by you to govern our great nation, let them govern our nation or let them get out of the place of power that they're seated. God, we ask for your wisdom right now that you can come, Lord, to every one of us. There's blood that has been shed. There is those that have created debts that they're not going to pay, not willing to pay. And Lord, act as though that it's our children's job. God, we ask forgiveness for that sin. Cause them, God, to change. Cause them to get on their knee, not to Allah, but to the Lord God Almighty. God, we ask for your help. We ask, God, right now that you move in the hearts of men and women throughout this country, that they call on God and that they repent and they call this nation to repentance and cause the leadership to repentance, that if they won't repent, that the fear of God will drive them from the position that they hold. God, we ask your blessing here. We pray all this in the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We stand here today in front of the White House. Not a coincidence that we're standing in front of the White House. 
because we want the inhabitant of that White House to hear what we have to say. He's in town today. Hopefully he's working in the Oval Office. But I suspect he may be hiding under his desk. Because what we have to say is what the American people have been wanting to say now for five years. And they've been wanting to say that even before the reign of President Barack Hussein Obama. We have been disserved by our country. Amen. Not the country itself, but by the so-called leaders of our country now for generations. Not since Ronald Reagan have we seen a president Amen. that commanded enough respect in this country to bring the American people together. And that's what we're doing today, and that's what we're going to be doing into the future, because we are building this coalition. Never before in modern history have so many conservative, libertarian, and other groups, people of faith, come together as one. We're coming together initially with a Gideon's army of people. It's better to have people around you that you can trust and people who you can depend on in the beginning of any revolution than to have people that are not on your side. And in fact, that's what happened in the Revolutionary War leading up to the Declaration of Independence in my native city of Philadelphia. It was only a handful of our founding fathers who generated the concept of a nation that would be free. One nation, as Bishop Dan just said, under God. One nation governed by Judeo-Christian principles. And although we have a First Amendment, and though we believe that people should be able to worship as ever they please, the reality is we are a country founded upon Judeo-Christian principles. The Talmud, the Torah, the Old Testament, the New Testament. And these are the principles with which we live. Our leaders have broken away from those principles. They no longer represent we the people. And that's why we must rise up we're doing it peacefully, we're doing it nonviolently. And we're going to persuade the rest of the country to join us. It was our great founding father, second American president, and the drafter of the Declaration of Independence, who said that when the people fear the government, there is tyranny. But when the government fears the people, there is liberty. Amen. Jefferson we didn't want too much federal power. He wanted to leave power in the hands of the people. Said there should be a revolution every 20 years. We need to renew ourselves. Jefferson even said, if you have to spill a little blood, that's what it's gonna take. We're not advocating that. We don't need to do that. We've got God on our side. He's gonna make sure that we win this revolution. And it was Ronald Reagan, over 200 years later who said that if we don't preserve liberty for our children, it'll vanish in one generation. I can tell you, in terms of my own experience, I've been a lawyer for many years. I've become an activist. I wrote a book, Boars, Why and How I Came to Fight the Establishment, which is my life story. And what I've seen in the course of my career is an establishment which represents itself. It doesn't represent the American people. In that direction, you have Capitol Hill, Democrats and Republicans. It's like the National Football League, the American League and the National League. They just wear different uniforms. But at every minute of every day, they spend 80% of their time on fundraising, not representing we the people. And what we've seen and what I have experienced in my lifetime is a Congress, and I worked there as a young boy right out of Duke University. 21 years old for a Republican senator during Watergate. Down the hall was Hillary Clinton, believe it or not. We didn't meet up at that time. Richard Nixon was in the process of being impeached. If he hadn't resigned, he would have been impeached. All these years later, what was Nixon impeached for? He was impeached for breaking into Watergate. Well, the occupant of this White House, Barack Hussein Obama, has used his national security agency to break into over 300 million homes with his prison program. Talk about having to resign. This is what we're advocating if our demands are not met.
We're giving him one last chance to obey the will of the American people. And for that matter, Republican leaders on Capitol Hill like John Boehner and Mitch McConnell. They all play the game. They all go to lunch. They all go to dinner. They divide the riches. And we, the American people, are left behind. And what I have learned in my career and why I became a legal revolutionary is that our government does not represent the people. It represents itself. That's right. Let me tell you what happened yesterday. But I was in court yesterday, right down the street, 3rd and Constitution Avenue. I was in front of a federal judge. We have brought two class action lawsuits, one for our client Charlie Strange and Marianne Strange, who are here today. Yeah. Great American heroes who are standing up yes, to get answers about why their son Michael died in a crash in Afghanistan that has been unexplained. It happened right after Osama bin Laden was killed. Mr. Strange and Mrs. Strange have been wiretapped, have been in, their computers have been invaded, and they've been violated, in effect raped, by the National Security Agency and Mr. Obama, who's sitting across the street, who controls that. And we were in court seeking a preliminary injunction. That's when you get the government to stop during the duration of a lawsuit pending the ultimate decision in the case. And we've sued not just for damages, but to have this NSA program curtailed if it's not involved with terrorists. As it is right now, every one of your phones is in effect being tapped. Every one of your internet connections is monitored. Every one of your social media is watched by the FBI, the CIA, and everybody else, regardless of whether you have anything to do with promoting terrorism or committing any crime. This is the biggest violation of rights, of constitutional rights, in American history. It is outrageous. It's beyond belief. It has created what is in effect a police state, a totalitarian state, where our socialist president, where our president who favors Muslim interest over American interest in the Middle East through our rules of engagement by not allowing us to fire on jihadists, where he's able to keep us down, where people of faith can no longer speak up, and that's why we're in front of the White House. This is an effort to coerce and enslave the American people into being quiet as he deconstructs this country and reconstructs it in his own socialist and borderline communist concept of what this country should be. We're going to talk about Obamacare when we're done with NSA. But the government lawyers come in yesterday, the Justice Department of Mr. Obama, who I fought with for many years during the Clinton years as well, same lawyers, they're there, head of the Civil Division, they're scared. And they tell the government, they tell the judge, that Mr. Clayman, I'm a plaintiff as well because my communications are being monitored, including Mr. Strange's and others that are in the case. They tell them that we don't have standing to bring the case. And why is that? because the only court that can decide the case is the National Security Court. And the government is going to decide what's right for that National Security Court, not the American people. We don't even have a right to appear in that court. The only entity that can appear is the Obama Justice Department and the NSA and the CIA. And I say to the judge, that can't be right. We're the American people. We have due process rights. We have to be heard. Your court is the last century of justice for this country. And honor, we look to you to protect us. The Justice Department also says that Mr. Clayman and Mr. Strange and Mrs. Strange and others, that we don't have standing to bring a case because we can't prove that we're being wiretapped because only they have the information that we're being wiretapped. Convenient, right? What does all this mean? And I told the judge this in, in plain terms. I said, Your Honor, if you do not stand there for the American people, if you do not take jurisdiction, if you do not find standing, then what is our recourse? We don't want to return to the days of 1776 when we had to rise up, when we had King George III, who was far less worse than Barack Hussein Obama. If, if the National Security Agency had existed in the days of 
King George III, our founding fathers, John Adams, Thomas Jefferson, Benjamin Franklin, their conversations would have been monitored and picked up, they would have been picked up, arrested, thrown in prison and executed before they ever got to Philadelphia to sign the Declaration of Independence. And that's what I told the judge. Let's talk about Obamacare. The occupant of that White House lied to the American people. He deceived us. He told us that we could keep our health care. That was false. But what about the Republican Party? The Republican Party that has all these corporations backing it and all these experts. You think they didn't know what was going to happen with Obamacare? You think they couldn't have stopped it if they really didn't want to? Watch Fox News. They're on TV smiling now that people are losing their health insurance because they think that's going to win the election for them in 2014. People who are dying, that's of secondary interest. And that tells you where we are today. We are in a position where the American people can only do it for themselves. Where we have to take matters into our own peaceful and legal hands. Where we are gathered here today and we're going to listen to a number of activists and speakers who are with us. We have, for the first time in modern history, created a coalition. More coming to us every day. Coalition of over 30 groups. Even people in Hollywood like Pat Boone, like Morgan Britton, who was a star on Dallas, John Ratzenberger, who was on Cheers, and others are coming to us from all over the country and all over the world. And we will create that people's army, a peaceful yeah. army. And we will have the moral courage and the ethical courage to change the state of this nation. It was another great founding father, John Adams, who said, 13 days before signing the Declaration of Independence, it doesn't matter how many times you change your rulers or forms of government without ethics, morality, and religion, you will not have lasting liberty. So we are gathered here today to discuss where we're going from this point. This is the beginning of the second American Revolution. Look on our website at, Reclaim Ameri at reclaimamericanow.net. Reclaimamericanow.net. Sign up. Join the second American Revolution. Sign up for our case against the NSA. All of you are involved. You are all being wiretapped. You're all having your privacy invaded. Any communications with your accountant, with your lawyer, even with your urologist are being monitored. And that's what I told the judge yesterday. We can add a proctologist on top of that. But we're not going to laugh, and he's not going to laugh. Because in the end, he will feel the force of the American people. Just like King George III did. And after this event is over, in some weeks, we're going to gather in Philadelphia. We're going to gather at City Tavern, right next to Constitution Hall. We're going to have delegates from every state of the United States, Tea Parties, our coalition members, others. We're going to formulate our plans in even greater specificity for the Second American Revolution. And we are going to elect a government in waiting. We're going to elect a president. We're going to elect a vice president. We're going to elect cabinet members. We are no longer going to listen to what they have to say. The people now are in charge. We, the people, are in charge. They will take orders from us. We don't take orders from them. Because they have violated our Constitution. They have violated the public's trust. They believe that they are the new American nobility and above the law. So we serve notice today that the American people that we represent have a list of demands. And Mr. Obama, take notice. Mr. Boehner, take notice. Mitch McConnell, take notice. Nancy Pelosi, go back to San Francisco where you belong. We rule the school. You do not. We're now going to read our Declaration of Independence, which is identical to the first Declaration of Independence with specificity to where we stand today, which is very similar to where we were in 1776.